one nation, under God, Could I please have a motion to adopt the amended agenda? Second. Any discussion? Well, let's add it, G. It looks like that's what, is that the only thing that's been added yet? And that is highlighted on the agenda. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 5-0-0. Um, could I please have a motion to hold executive session at the, let's see, after the action items um, in the interest of time for those who are here at our meeting and that executive session will be to discuss collective bargaining contract and the employment of a particular person. Second. Any discussion? Yes. My concern is that it's already 8 o'clock at night, and I do want to be considerate of the public, but I think it'd be better, it'd be better for us to do it when, we're our, when we are more arrested and not wait till later. I think it's better for us to do it then. But I do understand your concern and interest of considering the public, but it's an important topic we need to talk about, and we need to be not tired. <laughs> okay. Um, is anybody too tired to talk about this in 20 minutes? If it really takes 20 minutes, it's fine, but I don't want to have an hour meeting and then go nope, into executive it's, session. it's supposed to be quick. You got that? Mm -hmm. People presenting. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. And, and just one, one more thing to add. I don't think we'll be making any decisions after, so there will be mm -hmm. no votes or anything to go back into open session. So I forgot to mention the quickness of this meeting part. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Abstentions, that motion passes 5-0-0. Next, we have community input, and first on um, up will be Stacy Krupp. Do I need a mic? Yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> right next to you. All right. Um, I am Stacy Krupp. I am the Lansing Faculty Association President, also, and more importantly, an English teacher. And I'm here to tell you about uh, an incredible opportunity that's coming to the, the Ithaca community. It's not just Lansing. Um, last spring, the area union presidents, we meet quarterly, and we decided to undertake a rather large endeavor of um, getting donations of free books brought to Tompkins County. And there were two different levels, and it's all based on how many signatures we could gather from uh, our own teachers. And um, through the course of last spring to this fall, we gathered 2,000 signatures, and we have a shipment of 40,000 brand new books being delivered to Ithaca this Saturday for free to be handed out to any child who comes to the BOCES campus. Um, I have flyers. So you have homework. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Please hang them up in your workplaces. Um, these are uh, books that will be handed out. There's, there's two different times to come. Teachers can come and get them for free for their classrooms <coughs> between 9 and 10. And then between 10 and 12, all families grandparents, anyone who wants to come and get books can come. Sometimes this is geared towards elementary children only. This has books that are from pre-K through 12th grade, both in reading level and interest level. So um, please come, get the word out, get books, bring them back, get them to kids. It's all about literacy. Um, so we are doing it at the TST BOCES campus, uh, 555 Warren Road in Ithaca on Saturday morning. Um, Lansing teachers will be starting Thursday night at the campus organizing, moving the books. They're coming in a tractor trailer on, on Friday or on Thursday afternoon. We have to get them out of the tractor trailer. We have to organize them. We have to get them into reading level and um, age level. So Thursday, Friday night, Lansing teachers will be there and all day Saturday we will be there handing out books to kids. So please come. That's just great. Thank Thanks. you for sharing that with us. Any questions for Stacy? 
Stacey. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess just one thing. We heard um, all the panelists today talk about um, some of the individuals who may not have the resources to attend this. How can we make sure that we either have representatives there or what we can do to maybe go get for certain individuals sure. within our community? So all of the Lansing teachers um, from K through 8, I have commitment of all of the Lansing teachers sending this home with kids this week, this flyer for families to have at home. Um, PTSO has it in their newsletter. They are posted on the front doors of most of our buildings at this point. It would be great if principals could get something pushed out through their um, web pages and get them onto the web page for the elementary, middle, and high school um, and spread the word as, as openly as we possibly can. Hey, um, and Mr. Beener is here and doing an article about it in the Lansing Star. Great. Thank you. Great question, Julie. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, we have um, Ted Lux. Hi, I'm Ted Lux, community member. Um, I haven't attended board meetings for quite a while now, a couple of years, but I did attend almost every meeting for about 18 years. And uh, during that time, I think I saw the BOCES representative, I think, twice. And generally speaking, I had no idea who the BOCES representative was. And with the importance of BOCES and the, and the amount of money and, and services that are exchanged and whatever, I always thought it was sort of strange that we never got a report from that person. Uh, you know, you have two-way input, both get input from that person and also tell them what your concerns are since they are representing the district. So I was very happy to hear, I have not seen it before until tonight, but I was very happy to hear that our representative, Pat Pryor, has been attending the meetings and regularly uh, giving you information about what's going on at BOCES. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't done for 18 years, but I'm very happy to see it now, and I, I appreciate the fact you come to these meetings and uh, let us know what's going on. So, just thank, thank you. Thank you, Ted. Okay, um, next on our agenda is communications, and first up is the superintendent's report. Well, I don't have to, uh, much to report on. I just want, I want to say thank you for the candidates coming out and. Um, sharing, putting themselves out there and sharing with us. And also reminds me uh, how much I too love the community. And you know, it's just a good reminder to hear people talk so positively about, about Lansing and reminds us of all why we're here. So I appreciate all the time that the candidates are putting into it. I just want to give a quick update. Um, we did get the water test results back. I emailed out the community. Uh, uh, during our vacation and uh, we had three areas that showed that there was a elevated levels of uh, one was a middle school water fountain they call it in the report they call it a water cooler just that confused some people but it's a water fountain it's in middle school that was shut down there's another fountain on campus that is right near there so they're okay and then there was one on the pool deck that was also shut down but the pool shut down anyway so that would have shut down but we are uh, we went through and we did some repairs and make some changes um, but one other one was in the faculty lounge um, downstairs and um, uh, so all, all have been changed and either this week or um, next week will be retested and so we'll be looking to see uh, if we have to do more infrastructure and what the cause is um, the lead in the water hmm? and so um, <coughs> so we are just working with uh, to, uh, the TST BOCES and Tompkins County Health Department to make sure that everything's uh, safe, drinkable water for us. Okay, and that's it. Any questions for Chris? No, just thank you for getting the word out. As soon as the test results were out, you were right out there mm -hmm. sending us an email. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that responsiveness. Thank you. Okay, next is the school business administrator's report. I just have a couple of things for you. Uh, we, we pulled the solar up, solar presentation from the agenda tonight. I just wanted to give you a brief update on that. Uh, as you know, RER uh, financiers came to us a while back and wanted to modify, because of the time that had elapsed from our original agreement, wanted to modify the agreement. And uh, we have prepared a financial analysis of their proposed modifications, which Chris Santispirito will come in and, and provide to you. Um, however, um, a as we got rolling and working on that and doing some new research on what are the new numbers looking like, um, we discovered a another angle that we felt we should get some different language into the contract, as long as we're amending it, uh, to better protect the school. Uh, we're working closely with some of the solar people from Cornell and the Ithaca College contact that you gave us uh, and learning more and more. So. Um, uh, at this point, we've put a, a, a thing out to them saying, 
geez, we'd like to see this modification if you, if you want us to consider a modification at all. And um, we just have, they haven't finished crunching their numbers and looking at what, what that means for them and getting back to us. So that's why we pulled that. I anticipate we'll have Chris here on May 23rd. No promises. We'll, we'll, we're not in a hurry. We have a contract. Um, we're happy with the contract as it was approved by you a year ago. Um, but if we're going to modify things, we want to make sure we're modifying it for the better for everyone involved. So we'll, we're going to stay in front of that, and I'll keep you apprised of it. The internal auditor is here. Uh, he's been here for a couple of weeks now. I have him this year. I've asked him to do an audit of the jail. I usually take a, a quick swipe at that every three or four years just to make sure that uh, the Lansing taxpayers are not paying for anything they shouldn't be paying for. So uh, children from other school districts who are um, mandatory education age um, who are housed at the Tompkins County Jail, we receive a portion of their state aid as payment for educating them, uh, and we should only be paying for the Lansing students. We do contract through the BOCES um, to have them provide the educational program there, but we still shouldn't be paying for anything. Uh, that we don't receive aid or Title I grant money for. So uh, I've asked him to do an in-depth analysis of it. He's enjoying the heck out of it because he's a retired <laughs> business administrator, and it's not something you usually see, so he's learning a lot. Um, I will let you know how that goes when he's done. He's also taking a look at our Medicaid um, filing. Uh, we get about $70,000 a year in revenue on Medicaid. Um, some school districts locally choose not to do it because they don't feel that the revenue would be high enough. And um, I'm confident that they probably have higher Medicaid numbers than we have, and yet we're bringing in 70,000. So I think it's important we look at these things. Um, the SPAR project has kicked off. We have contractors on campus. Uh, they are doing work. A number of these activities, as you know, will be uh, more additional energy savings for us on uh, the boiler in the high school, some things like that. Um, but we have things that we're doing everywhere, and we're just absolutely thrilled that we're finally getting at program improvements. Um, so that's something we really are, have, have striven towards, and we just needed to get enough of the infrastructure secure that, that we could take that direction, and we're happy to announce we're doing that. The Facilities Administrative Committee met last week at length. Uh, Mr. Swanson sent you an update, a little bit about what we talked about. Um, uh, I have a meeting scheduled in two weeks with uh, folks from Tetra Tech and our financial advisors just to further tweak the numbers. Um, but I think it's important that you understand that this is new for us, but we are really taking a long-term look at this. We're, we're singling out a, a project for probably 2018 um, and looking at what the infrastructural needs are be. And also, I've been taking a lot of requests on program requests from the principals and from the various faculty members um, and the community uh, uh, folks that, that come to our meetings. Um, but we're also sort of eyeballing and laying out uh, another project because in 2020, 2021, we'll have a little debt falling off. We'll be able to move on perhaps another project, especially if we have some capital reserve in place. So just so you know, it's, it's becoming a longer term vision for us as far as this planning goes. Uh, nothing in rock until the voters have voted on something and we've defined a scope, but uh, it feels really good to be going in that direction with long term facilities planning than we've ever, longer term than we've ever had. So I wanted to bring you aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mary June? I just was curious when we have like kind of the meeting of the minds regarding the solar project. I'm assuming we'll get the lawyers involved again to look at the sides yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah, the lawyers have already been involved in the, in the initial proposed <laughs> amendment. They're not aware of this, this new thing that we're asking about. We'll bring them into it. Um, uh, and I think that much of what they wrote up in their most recent uh, analysis was the same thing they'd written up a year ago, okay. uh, really. But uh, we'll, we'll bring them into it, and those will be things you'll have to weigh in your decision making. Thank you. Okay, now, now we'll have our special quick principal's yeah. principal <laughs> reports. <laughs> Who would like to go first? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm never quick. <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so a couple of things that need to be recognized. The um, Night of Life Committee did a terrific job on their lock-in to lock-out cancer uh, it, last month. They were very successful. Uh, close to half the student body was there uh, to participate. Not everybody stayed the whole night because we had sporting events and things of that sort. So it was terrific. It, it's just a reminder of how much Lansing students love to get together and play tournaments in the gym and swim in the pool and watch movies and stay up all night. Um, it was really terrific. Many parents also participated, and I'd like to recognize our superintendent and Ms. Rivera for hanging out in the middle of the night with me. That was lovely. <laughs> Uh, we just finished our student of the quarter ceremony. It's a third one. We do it for the first three marking periods. We recognize 12 students uh, for 
basically persistence, a good uh, work ethic, and trying, especially when things are hard. And I have to say, it's from families over and over again, say how pleased they are, and it's really about the personal nature of it. We invite families and um, students and faculty members give personal testimonials uh, in the library, and it's just lovely, and I love doing it, and we'll continue to do it. Uh, AP exams have started. They started last week. We have a couple more this week. Everything's gone smoothly, so that's good news. I want to recognize Steve Jones, who's our coordinator and has done a fantastic job. As you heard, uh, we, the construction for the SMART project has started, which means that we uh, handed over our senior parking lot to um, the construction company which is never a popular thing. <laughs> However, uh, Mr. Heck and I visited the senior classes prior to vacation to let them know, government and econ, here's what's going on. This is what our plan is. Let's get some feedback. I want you to be prepared when we come back. And they were great. You know, they, they sort of understand this cycle that Mary June's all training us about, that there are going to be <laughs> these projects. Uh, we were able to put aside 15 parking spots in the front for seniors, our staff were flexible and said, okay, we'll park in the back more. Um, and so by and large, I think it's going pretty well. And if not, you can be sure I'll hear about it. So that's good. <laughs> um, we have a, our second annual Lansing Car Show on May 13th. This is a brainchild of Matt Predigrew last year, who was part of the BOCES program and saw one there and brought it to Lansing. He's graduated and so we have two others who now I said, we should do that again. So that'll be um, Friday, and it's after school. Cars line up behind the building, and both students and staff and community members participate. We have our eighth grade visit on May 16th. With the help of Ms. Rivera, we're able to bring our entire eighth grade team over, um, students rather, uh, just as students come over and work with our link crew leaders. And it's students to student contact to talk about coming to the high school. And the goal really is just to um, address any anxieties, to be really warm and welcoming, and to answer any questions that they have, and it's about an hour. And lastly, we have our junior-senior prom, which will take place on May 21st at the John Joseph Inn, and the after-prom party will be this year at the rink, um, and our families are working really, really hard to make that after-prom a uh, special event, as it always is. Thanks. Oh, a lot of stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're beginning all of our transition conversations at the middle school, transitioning from fourth grade to fifth grade and from eighth grade to ninth grade. <clears throat> our eighth graders had the opportunity to visit BOCES to learn about some of the programs offered there. And as Ms. Ludley said, we'll be visiting at the high school. We're really looking forward to making that connection with the link crew. We've had some of the link crew members come down and visit the middle school already um, to connect with some of our students. So we're, we're really looking forward to having that happen. Um, we'll be hosting the fourth graders uh, usually we do that for lunch and we have some communication back and forth between the teachers and the students um, as they're preparing to come up to the middle school. We're doing a lot of end of the year planning. Of course, we're um, getting ready for the, the um, lack of accessibility to the auditorium. So that'll impact the end of our year. So we're taking all those things into consideration when we're planning our events and um, our recognition of students and um, moving up ceremonies and such. And so we're all working together to plan that so that it's um, smooth and fun and enjoyable for the students and the families. Our staff and faculty are uh, very busy at this time of year. Our faculty is doing a lot of professional development um, together where we moved on to a new district um, priority, the text-based strategies for learning. And so we're working together to look at different ways to learn from text and teach students to take away some things that they can use and ask questions. Um, we've had some creative programming on that. We'll be continuing that work and that'll go into next year as well. We're getting ready for our semi-formal seventh and eighth grade dance on May 20th. The theme as selected by the student council is purple rain <laughs> and we will be having some very special decorations and snacks and um, sure that the seventh and eighth graders are going to have a wonderful time. We're looking forward to the event. A lot of mi middle schoolers, of course, went to our NISPA, NISMA. I don't have all the counts on that, but congratulations to everyone who participated in that annual event. And that's all. Um, from the Office of Special Services, the first thing going on with preschool education is that we have an audit going on. And the reason why we have an audit going on is Lansing is a multi 
um, disciplinary evaluation site, which is very unusual. So the great thing about that is when we have uh, children that are preschool age, our own people do the full evaluation, where other districts have to, have to contract for uh, people to come in and do evaluations. So that's really good for us as far as our kids and um, keeping them close to our, our people. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is Friday I did a presentation at the executive um, board at BOCES. Actually, Tony was there. And it was a great, because it was a celebration, so that was great. But the best thing is that our data recently came as directors, and Lansing met state targets for classification rate, graduation rate, dropout rate, participation in state assessments, suspension rate, and least restrictive environment. So we made all of our state targets. Um, one worry I did put out, and I, I, I've noticed that my dropout rate, I'm worried about dropout rate as we move forward, and I know Ms. Ledley's with me on that. Um, but what I really noticed is that the kids we lose in high school are the kids we haven't been able to start with. So when they come to us in mm -hmm. high school, mm -hmm. you know, we lose them. We don't have that connection with them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when we look back at the kids we lose, that's what we're noticing. So how, how we navigate um, those connections either deeper or I, I'm not sure. But that's our connection. It's not the kids that have been here forever. Um, number three, I would like to show. Oh, and then um, all these rates here, I want to say it's because I have great principles. They're not suspending kids. We're looking at alternatives. We're really looking at how to differentiate. Um, my t our teachers are great and our paraeducators are great. So we couldn't do any of this stuff in special ed without the people on the, the ground in each school. Um, in area three, um, Ms. Ledley and her high school did the C Day. And I feel like I want to make a testament here. I chair all of the 504 committees and CSE committees at the high school, and every kid that sits in front of me is telling me something about C Day. Oh. So they all felt part of it in some way. It's fascinating to me. And it's all, all some, they're all telling me something different at the table, but it's been very exciting to see that connection. So I, I, and this is my first year seeing that, so that's a real testament to this, this C Day. And then the last thing is, um, I'd like to publicly thank Mathnasium. They often give me scholarships for my needy students. Um, as of recent, they might be losing their lease, so we are having less opportunities. He's looking for somewhere else to go, but I just really feel like I want to say that about what Ewan has done for us on Lansing. He really is frequently giving me help for students who can't afford the program. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay, and in the world of curriculum and instruction and professional learning, we are starting to engage the process of developing regional priorities for next year. So these are the, the priorities in the BOCES region for what, um, where we'll direct professional learning resources and, and targets. Um, we are in the midst of developing our new APPR plan, so we'll be coming to you soon for approval of that. Um, let's see, we've had all of our in-house professional learning on an ongoing basis, and Christine referred to a little bit of that, but we're about to step into our big vertical articulation day at the end of the year. And I guess I just wanted to say it's really um, a gift to be able to have the time to stop and have these conversations together. It's, you know, from my perspective, it's not many districts that get to actually take the time and in a thoughtful manner and in a repeated manner, so we get better at it every time we do it, um, that we're able to make sure that second grade is talking to third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade. Um, so thanks for that time. And I think I'm going to leave it at that in the name of time. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Lauren? Okay, thank you. Uh, next is uh, Board of Education reports. Um, Pat, why don't we start with you okay. tonight? Yeah. Sure. Why you? Have yes. Um, okay. Thank you. Oh, oh. Right here. Thank you. I just want to start by saying thank you to the Lansing Board on behalf of the BOCES for your support of our budget this year. Um, that was great to hear. Um, this is the time of year when all the programs are coming to the end and a lot of culminating activities are going on. There are a couple that are particularly popular with the public and that uh, we, we typically have a lot of people that attend and I just wanted to mention them in case you haven't heard about them yet. These are open to the public so everybody is welcome. Uh, the plant sale is going on up at the greenhouse. Saturday uh, it was open and it will also be open on Wednesday um, from 8 in the morning to 2.45 in the afternoon. 
The plants are fantastic. I went there on Saturday and was able to pick up some beautiful pansies and a, a pretty hanging plant. So if you haven't gotten over there yet, see if you can make it over on Wednesday. The other thing is the high school equivalency exam graduates uh, will be, that graduation will be taking place on Friday, May 20th at the NYSIG Auditorium at 7 p.m. in the evening. So I don't know if you may have former students from Lansing who are part of this graduating class this year by having earned their high school equivalency test, but that's when that graduation is taking place. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay. Any questions for Pat? All right, do we have any Board of Education reports? I do. I have a couple comments. Um, <coughs> So I attended probably my last kindergarten musical play with Katie Howe. <laughs> I'm excited and happy about that, but sad at the same time. Um, she does such a does such a good job with the kids and teaching about music and music and being culture in. And she also is a good um, introduction to what Lansing offers to the whole child. And she talks about the programs and how it really is about experiencing music and experiencing culture right now in elementary school and everybody gets to try. And I thought she just did a nice job of, of talking about what the district's mission is and what we do to these you know, kindergarten parents who need to hear that and be reassured that this is something that everybody gets a chance to do. And she just does a wonderful job with the kids and how much music, um, music theory they learn. Even my um, private piano teacher says, you know, Katie Howell makes her job easy because the kids know so much when they come to her after being in school a couple of years. So thank you, Katie. It was a, you know, Jack and being stuck like I've never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> and two, I want to kind of um, not talk, kind of bring up, you know, the last couple of times we, we've talked about planning things or things happening um, with the Board of Education events, um, it's, it's sort of been lost what we really do or what we typically do. And I thought about um, when I was in the military, we used to have this thing called a captain's log. And that was what, it just did a little more twist about what the person in charge typically did or the, the, the unit did, you know, to execute whatever rules and regulations they had to. So I was wondering if we could start something like that and we can do a document on like Google Drive and we just talk about, you know, like things like the meet the candidate nights or any other things that we do that aren't really, um, talked about specifically in uh, you know, the handbook or you know, regulations or whatever, but things that we do are nice in the way we do it. You know, and anybody, like maybe creating a document that anybody can create and make notes on and just having it live in the Board of Education document. And I just wonder if anyone's any interested in starting that or doing, you know, participating in something like that. Well, maybe some, that's something we can give some thought to and then collect our, our thoughts on that? I mean, it'd be really informal. It's mostly just for, hey, this is what I noticed that we forgot this year, or next year it'd be nice, we should do this. Typically this time of year we do that, and we just kind of do like, we could do, you know, month or maybe event for like, you know, just just something to have an idea, like when we always get together, give the superintendent whoever's planning whatever they need to plan for us, sort of a way to store and keep feedback. And it doesn't have to be a, you know, it can be anonymous. I, I don't care about that. It's just about having, like, when we get together and start talking about things, I don't think it happened that way or it happened this way. Well, let's look at the notes and see this informal diary and see what happened. And I think that would be helpful for future boards, too. But that's, that's, all my, um, that's my comment about that. Uh, see, so we do have the, uh, the new board member mm -hmm. site. We could put a, a page under that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Or we could just... Yeah, know, just something. A, a really, that, so. yeah, a really yeah. simple... Really you know, good. this is what I liked about that. Next time we should pay attention to this. Like, just something to keep well, it's our... It's like a bulletin board kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think, you know, when we were at this C day and we were doing the panel, there were some things that came up that we were sort of mentally making notes about to bring back for discussion, and that might be something like that. That might be a place to mm -hmm. put those kinds of things, kind of a mental reminder to say, yes, we want to make sure we follow through with those. and because. You know, they can get lost. You take notes, and then if you, you know, they don't get back to a board meeting. Um, so I think, you know, it could work. Okay, thank you. It's a possibility. Do you have your TST I do. I just have a couple quick things, uh, and just to follow up on what uh, Ted had mentioned earlier. Uh, we do have a, um, a 
Posey's does host a school board association monthly meeting, um, and there are representatives from every district in the county. Um, I'm our primary, and Christine is the alternate. Um, so we will we go there and, and meet with uh, uh, the folks from Bosey's and the other districts, and we talk a little bit about what's going on, and the Bosey's folks share things with us. Um, and last Friday, of course, we had now. Uh, Ms. Rourke tried to convince me that she was not accustomed to public speaking and giving presentations, and she did a wonderful job uh, giving her, her presentation on special services, uh, which was really well received by the, by the other folks um, as well. Uh, so typically they'll have something like that, and then uh, Dr. Matson gives us an update on what he thinks, and then Charlie, and I can never pronounce Charlie, you would think I could pronounce Charlie's last name. Uh, from the <coughs> Central New York School Board Association gives us some some information on on the things that uh, he kind of sees coming down the pike. So um, <clears throat> that was last Friday, and I just wanted to mention I was at NISMA Saturday, and Mr. Hibber did his usual yeoman's duty, uh, keeping that running, and uh, all the kids uh, seemed like they they really had a good time and did a great job. So okay. that's pretty much it. Thank you. And, um, you know, we're remiss in not thanking you for, for coming, and thank you to Ted for <laughs> thanking yeah. Pat, because, uh, no, it is true. We, we have never had a, a BOCES um, uh, representative come and give us reports or be in, in communication with us. So it, it, is, it is something that um, needs marking, so thank you. I feel a little awkward saying, you're welcome. Okay, thank you for the board reports. All right. Uh, we have no presentations and discussions tonight, so next, could I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 5-0-0. Next, we have our action items. Could I please have a motion to approve the overnight trip request for the senior class to New Jersey and Pennsylvania, departing on June 3rd, 2016, and returning on June 4th, 2016? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? That motion passes 5-0-0. Could I please have an emo a motion to approve the attached proposal for external auditors for a three-year contract from 2016 through 2018? Uh, and this is a motion that was tabled from our April 20th meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just um, had posted a comment that I thought I know that some as board members, we have to go to some financial planning meetings and financial education. I know that they recommend that we truly change our auditors every so many years. And I'm always kind of the proponent here that wants to try to keep things as local as possible. So why I don't want to necessarily not have our auditor, when I looked at their request for proposal, I truly saw that they had three different auditors and one audit manager. And now that this particular firm has merged with another firm, could we make a friendly amendment? Not, not that anything was wrong with the individual auditor to themselves, but to have another set of eyes or a different set of eyes, either from that current office or now with the merged office, if we might want to consider someone just different within that practice coming in and auditing. And we made that request to them. That Did was you? part of our, in our decision making, and they, in writing, agreed to that. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other discussion? I, just, I, I think that's a smart practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I am opposing. Any abstentions? That motion passes 410. Could I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. I know, I'm trying to. Remember. Okay, could I please have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. To discuss the collective bargaining contract and the employment of a particular person. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? As Julie said, there will be no decisions made um, after that. All in favor, please say, please say aye. 